So, an interesting package showed up at the studio today, and I'm actually really excited about this one. So this is the Lenovo Yoga Book 9i. It's the crazy looking dual screen laptop. Essentially, there's no physical keyboard or trackpad. Uh, I'm really excited to test this out because it's a very unique product. It's not officially on sale yet. I don't know when that's happening, but let's talk about it. But first, let's unbox this thing. All right, so I've spent about a few weeks playing around with this laptop slash tablet slash multi-mode device, and I've got some thoughts. First up, let's address the elephant in the room, which is this dual screen layout. Now, traditionally, laptops come with a screen, a keyboard, and a trackpad that's built in, but Lenovo thought outside of the box and replaced the bottom deck with another OLED display. So essentially, you're getting two 13.3 inch, 2.8K OLED, 60 hertz, 16 by 10 displays, and they're beautiful. As you know, OLEDs provide rich and vibrant colors with those inky blacks, and the color output is very consistent across both these panels. Um, they cover 100% sRGB, 95% Adobe RGB, and 100% P3. And the brightness levels are respectable. You only get around 371 nits, so using this laptop outside in direct sunlight can be a bit challenging since uh, they are glossy and highly reflective. Now, you can treat this as a massive canvas to get all sorts of things done, like watching a YouTube video while surfing the web uh, or just any other productive tasks. It's a serious learning curve getting used to this laptop, and you need to keep track of a lot of gestures in order to get the most out of the 9i. But before we get into all of that, here's a quick message from today's video sponsor. The new Montec M-Key keyboards are all about the real pleasures of sight and sound for daily feel-good fingertip moments. We've got cool colorways, comfortable and great texture keycaps, latest Gateron switches with proper lube, and a hot swap board with silica dampening that sounds way above its class. Plus, enjoy the accent keycaps and the rotary knob for that Montec goodness. Check them out below. Let's start with window management. So if you want to move an app from the primary display to the secondary display, uh, simply tap and drag the window with your fingers. You'll see a little pop-up menu suggesting the second screen. If you tap longer, it'll show the default Windows 11 multitasking layouts. Um, if you want to spread the app across both screens, simply tap the current window with just five fingers and it'll just give you this massive portrait style layout where you can just browse through web content, and uh, yeah, it, it looks pretty cool. Just take note that you must enable this feature through the User Center app. Now, because this is a very unique laptop setup, Lenovo had to develop their own set of drivers to run on top of Windows 11. So if you need a keyboard and a trackpad, well, it's virtual. So simply tap the bottom display with eight fingers, and as you can see, it brings up a standard size keyboard along with a massive trackpad uh, that extends all the way across the second half of the screen. And you also get uh, virtual primary and secondary buttons as well. I was genuinely impressed with the responsiveness of this trackpad. It's actually pretty accurate with touch inputs like uh, selecting windows and dragging group of icons. They've also built a haptic motor inside which responds to the primary and secondary taps. Now, obviously, it's not going to be as precise as a precision glass trackpad because this feels somewhat resistant when you're dragging uh, your finger across um, the display. But remember, finger oil is a thing, so it does help with smoothing navigation over time. As for the keyboard, well, it's a cool concept, and it's very responsive to text inputs, but it's nowhere closer to what you get from a physical keyboard. I always end up mixing the P and backspace keys when I'm fixing up typos, which I made a lot. If you're a typist, you're not going to like this, period. Not to mention, um, this display heats up over time when you're resting your palms uh, on the screen. It does get uncomfortable, and you can see that with these surface temperatures. But there's a quick fix. You could simply take this external wireless keyboard that comes with the laptop and just place it on top of this virtual keyboard. It just snaps easily, and the laptop recognizes it right away, and you can now start to comfortably type. I did a simple type test between these two setups, and guys, it's a day and night difference. Nothing comes close 
to the tactile feedback that you get from a proper keyboard. And just be aware that it does slide up and down slightly, but that's due to the glass surface underneath. Because this is an external accessory, it does require external power. So you can juice it up via USB Type-C and battery life is decent. It'll last you for about a month on a single charge. You can also power it off and reset the Bluetooth connection with the switch located right over here. If you need a little bit more screen real estate, you can shift the keyboard all the way to the bottom, uh, but it's not perfect because by default, it enables something called widget bar that displays the Outlook calendar and the top stories for the day. I really wish if Lenovo added third-party support for this layout, like HSL controls for Lightroom or editing tools for Premiere Pro and other applications. It just feels like a missed opportunity here. There's just no other way to customize this widget bar. Now you can exit this feature and use it as a secondary display, but keep in mind that Windows management doesn't work that well because apps get cut off uh, due to the position of the keyboard. It's just not optimized for this semi dual screen layout. The 9i is also missing a lot of features that Lenovo is marketing, like smart note functions that allow you to quickly jot down notes while being on the lock screen, or quickly adding bookmarks, or just quickly launching a screenshot tool with the stylus. Lenovo says that they're coming soon, but there is no definite time for that. You see, this device is clearly designed to be transformable. You can take this thing from laptop mode to tent mode that allows you to present PowerPoints so people facing you can see what you want them to see while you're working in real time, looking at your show notes uh, on your screen. Now, as of today, PowerPoint is the only app that's supported. There's just no way to mirror these displays. Uh, that would have been really cool, to be honest. Um, then there is book mode, which you can literally use as a book. So you can have your PDF textbook on one side while also uh, jotting down notes on the other display with the included stylus. Uh, this is really useful for students, although as I mentioned earlier, the Smart Notes app designed for Yoga Book isn't available yet, so you'll have to rely on third-party solutions to get that task done. Also, for those of you wondering, you can use this in tablet mode. It's, it essentially just disables that second screen and it optimizes uh, the primary display for touch inputs. And finally, there is my most favorite mode. I call it dual screen desktop layout, and it's what I use most of the time uh, when using the Book 9i. So what you do is essentially you take the folio case that comes with uh, the laptop, and you're just gonna fold it into the stand. The included crease sort of like guides you uh, to uh, this setup. And then you're gonna take this keyboard, and it's just gonna magnetically snap, just like that. And what you're gonna do is just take this laptop and prop it at an angle, and just like that, you now get to experience one of the coolest portable dual screen setups. Now you can either use this in landscape mode or portrait orientations if you're into coding. I normally prefer landscape because it really fits uh, my workflow really well. Plus it's a comfortable experience of viewing these two displays in this orientation since it doesn't cause any fatigue when you're using this in laptop mode because when you have to look at that second screen, you have to constantly look up and down and it's just not that comfortable. And guys, there's just so many benefits to the setup, okay? So first and foremost, it's a productivity experience. You can take a Zoom meeting on one screen while typing up notes on the other display. If you're into content creation, you can have the timeline on the primary display while having bins, effects, windows, and audio levels on the second screen. Adobe Lightroom allows you to take advantage of dual screens as well by showing your main controls on the main display that you're working on uh, and having the library on the second screen. It's super useful if you're editing thousands of photos Gaming is also supported, but only with a few titles like Asphalt 9, Modern Combat, and Dungeon Hunter 5. Keep in mind, these are older games, plus the specs on the Yoga 9i just can't keep up with modern titles. Also, for those of you wondering about the included stylus, it can easily be stored in the loop that's conveniently attached to the folio case. It's a brilliant design in my opinion. So this is the webcam test on the Yoga Book 9i. And as you can see, the quality is fantastic. Lenovo is using a 1080p sensor, so everything's well detailed. There's excellent uh, field of view, so you can fit more subjects in the frame. It's all great. But I wanted to point out that the position of the webcam is just a great coincidence because if you're using this in the dual screen desktop layout, uh, you don't have to constantly look down on the screen where you're typically looking at when you have a traditional laptop. This is just right at the top. So, you know, you can just have a comfortable ergonomic conversation with whoever you are talking to. Plus, if you want to do top-down setups or if you want to just showcase something, you can simply just bring down the screen all the way here and just start showing whatever you're 
talking about. So whether it's a phone or just anything around, um, you could do the same thing and it works really well. It's just a beautiful integration. Plus you also get the webcam kill switch that's located uh, right beside the power button. I should also mention that the built-in speakers are fantastic. They have positioned two front-facing tweeters on the hinge bar. So the idea behind this design is to offer a 360 degree immersive audio experience. And when you're using this thing in laptop mode and the desktop dual screen mode, the sound projection is direct. So the trebles are bright and crispy with no distortion. The woofers give you a little bit of kick, but nothing mind blowing. Seriously though, this is miles better than bottom facing speakers on other laptops. By the way, I highly recommend pairing an external Bluetooth mouse with the YogaBook 9i, especially if you plan to use this in this particular setup. Um, it's just gonna, it's guaranteed to boost your productivity by a thousand percent. But given the niche characteristics of this product, there were some quirks that I had to deal with. For instance, sleep wake function is a bit complicated. Tapping on the display while the laptop is sleeping just won't wake it up because on a regular laptop, just pressing a key or tapping on the trackpad would do the trick. Here, you have to press the power button, which by the way, is located at an unusual spot right by the bottom edge. And I kept accidentally powering off the device when manipulating um, this thing in between different modes. It was just really frustrating. So if you're trying to log in, um, the virtual keyboard doesn't show up. So you'll have to use the Windows default um, login screen. So there's there's that. Window management doesn't work always between these two displays. Uh, the pop-up menu to send the window to the second screen doesn't show up sometimes, which then requires a reboot. I also found something odd with DaVinci Resolve. So if you end up using the second screen as the primary editing layout and the first display uh, for a clean video feed, it actually ends up being inverted. Uh, switching them around addresses the issue, but I thought it was worth mentioning. I also noticed that the app layout does not reset when you enable the virtual keyboard. So say for instance, your last opened app was on the second screen. And if you're trying to reopen that same application, it's actually hidden underneath the virtual keyboard, which was very frustrating. And then there's the fingerprint fiasco that you have to deal with because fingerprints, I mean, Y'all know this is gonna happen, right? You see, I like to keep my tech as clean as possible, so I always carry a microfiber cloth with me just to clean the stuff that I carry around, but this was just high maintenance because you gotta you gotta have to like clean up the bottom screen and the top constantly if you like to keep things clean, by the way. Uh, but yeah, that was just another thing that I had to deal with. Ultimately, most of these quirks can be fixed with software updates, but I'm not sure if Lenovo was gonna support this ecosystem for the next five years. I mean, who knows if they're gonna launch a 2024 model with updated specs. Speaking of specs, I'm just gonna quickly breeze through them. Uh, so you're getting a 13 gen Alder Lake Core i7-1355 CPU with two P cores and eight E cores for a total of 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of LPDDR5X memory at 6400 megahertz, a one terabyte gen for SSD and Intel Iris XD graphics. To be honest, this isn't gonna to top any charts if that's what you're looking for. I would say its ideal use case would be for coding, maybe a little bit of photo and some light content creation, particularly with vertical formats. Just don't go crazy with long form projects because this laptop just can't keep up. It's a U-series CPU, so you gotta treat it like a U-series CPU. I guess the benefit of having an ultra low voltage chip is better battery life. And I was pretty impressed with the Book 9i. So I went out of my way and tried something outside of our usual test procedures. Because this has two screens, I loaded up the first display with a 4K YouTube video while having a web page on the second screen refreshing for 15 seconds. And the system lasted for about six hours, which is pretty impressive in my opinion, considering that it boasts an 80 watt hour battery. Finally, I wanna quickly talk about the design of the YogaBook 9i. I mean, it shares a lot of the design language from the slim Pro 9i featuring this beautiful tidal teal color. It's built out of CNC anodized aluminum with these curvy edges for better comfort. And the build quality is fantastic. Considering all the features this thing packs, it's remarkably thin coming in at 0.63 inches or 15.9 millimeters. And it only weighs around three pounds, so it's very portable. You can easily take this dual screen setup wherever you need. I mean, just how cool is that? Now the port selection is very limited. You only get three Thunderbolt 4 ports, which can be used for docking or plugging in peripherals that accept USB-C, including displays. You can get away with adapters, but I think the lack of additional USB-A ports or HDMI is due to that second display because there's just very little room to accommodate larger connectors. What about upgradability? Well, 
I hate to break it to you. There's just no way to get inside this laptop. I mean, there's no screws as you can see, um, but that makes sense because there's some complex engineering stuff happening underneath the hood here uh, because of that dual screen setup. So yeah, memory soldered on, SSD soldered on. Um, this is what you basically get when you buy it directly from Lenovo. So there you have it, guys. The Yoga Book 9i is honestly one of the coolest laptops that I've ever got my hands on. I don't think I can even classify this as a laptop because it's just more than that. Um, and I think the biggest takeaway from using this device is just the improvements it brings to productivity. I mean, just having two separate screens and doing your thing is just, it's just so cool. I personally got a lot of work done using the setup. Imagine just walking into a coffee shop and just setting this thing up. I mean, that only takes about five seconds. You're gonna be the cool kid on the block. Now, is it perfect? Absolutely not. But I was shocked at how many things it did so well. And the performance is pretty impressive, all things considered. Now, you might be asking yourselves, how much does this thing cost? Well, Lenovo was asking for $2,000, which is a lot of money, but uh, you gotta realize this is a niche product that's catered towards users who wanna try something different. Unfortunately, it's not available at the time I'm making this video, so there's that. And on that note, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're able to take away everything that you needed to know about this insane dual screen laptop from Lenovo, the YogaBook 9i. Let us know what you guys think about in the comments. Would you actually consider this product from Lenovo? Yeah, I'm curious to know. And if there's any other use cases that you guys would use this for, again, feel free to chime in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say. I'm Ebro with Hybrid Connects. Thanks so much for watching. And uh, I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Spend responsibly. I don't want to send this back to Lenovo. I, I, I don't want to send this back to Lenovo. Tech is getting boring. This is what makes tech exciting.